<laughs> Some of you probably just got a notice if you're in the Heartbeat group or if you read your email or if you're on the East Coast perhaps because it's 9.30 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. These are my new Halloween pajamas. And uh, <laughs> if I live my best life today, I'm gonna do a lunch live and a dinner live because this is the last day for vegan for everyone that you can buy it. So after that, you just can't anymore. I don't have it. I can't ask anybody else to do it. Um, but there, I was gonna do one every day. You remember when I said that on Friday? And um, well, I did a three hour class on Saturday, which you guys can watch. It was with Elizabeth's Chapel Hill plant-based pod and we did milk makers. And I had a captive audience that I could give tastes to. So I had no idea my class went that long. I was like, want to try this? Want to try that? Want to try all the things? So um, I'm going to chop up this onion and get some garlic ready. What we're doing, so I just figured today I would make recipes from the book, Vegan for Everyone. The one thing I think is a concern to some of you guys is that the recipes are not oil-free except for mine. But I'm going to show you how I change things around. And maybe even if you have no interest in Vegan for Everyone, hopefully it will help you change up some of your favorite old vegan recipes is kind of the thing. Um, and I just decided this morning I was going live. So that's why you guys don't know. And um, Justine and Mary Ellen, the King's Child, Kelly and Linda Fowler are all here. Made oats this morning. In fact, there's oats in a slow cooker right over here. But I was like, you know, let's, let's make some of this. So I'm gonna chop up this onion. Okay, again, I did this last time too. Uh, Nakano sent me this cool knife and it's really nice and um, so that's why we're talking about it I wouldn't tell you about anything that's not nice now we're doing Priya's Mexican scramble I'm going to change a few of the things around other than the oil and I'll tell you why this is a pretty big onion Cheryl is not an onion fan so I'm only using half an onion instead of a whole onion Honestly, if I wasn't doing this for you guys, I probably would be even lazier and just use onion powder and garlic powder. That's available for any recipe. <laughs> so just remember that when you're like, oh, why am I doing this? Ooh, the one thing I did not get was some water. You're going to see my Crocs. Here we go. We're going to need a little water to saute because we're not going to use oil. Hey, Liz from Ontario. That is awesome to see you. And Dee, it's so, oh, Debbie, good. Thank you for putting that down. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I know she's told me her name. And I, I thought it was Dee. And welcome, Liz. We're just hanging out. Oh, good morning, Whispering Jesse. So we're just making a little Mexi tofu scramble. And I can show you, see I have over here, I don't think you guys can see but it's in the picture. And so it's Mexican scrambled tostadas. And I thought we'd make tostadas, but first we've got to saute these onions. So I've got to cut these up really quick. So um, as far as this knife that I'm really digging, if you look in the comments wherever you may see it, and if you're on YouTube, you have to click more under description to see all of that. Um, there's a 20% coupon. And there's a link to buy Vegan for Everyone, which ends today. So a lot of these ebook sales or bundle sales, they just last for a short time. And that's true of this one. Okay. Now when you have a good new Samancy knife, don't take the sharp side and scrape things off. Always turn it upside down and use the back side, and that will keep your knife sharper longer. So we'll go ahead and get these sauteing. Yeah, here we go. So I'm just gonna turn it over eh, high-ish heat, because I actually have a meeting at 10, so I need to cook these up a little faster. 
and see how I'm using the back of the knife to do that. And we'll let these kind of cook. And then while that's doing it, I'm going to, it said five um, cloves of garlic, but these are huge cloves of garlic. Woo! Okay, that was more than one clove of garlic. So I'm going to smash it to get the skin off. And let's see if there, yep, there's a couple more hiding in there. And then I'm going to use my um, garlic smasher. Obviously, I am just in a mood, aren't I? I did not sleep super well last night. How did you guys sleep? Um, oh, Bella is taking um, us on a jog with her. Yay, with her dogs. That is awesome. So I'm just going to take off this little tiny edge here a little bit. and I'm going to cut those off and then I'm going to use the garlic smasher. The garlic smasher honestly works better on smaller cloves of garlic, but you, you know, as much as I want to be magical and snap um, <laughs> my fingers and have it go. So this is what I'm talking about. And I'm going to wash my hands because I have sticky garlic juice all over it, y'all. Oh, and someone just said they never sleep well. That makes me sad. I'm a person who needs to sleep. Okay. So I'm not sure if you can hear, but these are kind of like sizzling a little bit. And right now... I don't have any oil in the pan because this is releasing, these onions are releasing water and I've got a nonstick pan. If I'm doing a class, I start off putting some water in there. Good morning, Ann. Oh, you're up early in Oregon. Look at you. And hi, Davika and Nona. Oh, that's awesome. Nona says, I've just bought my elderly king. Charles Cavalier, uh, a pram. That's amazing. I need a picture of that for sure. Okay, so you just take this and you get to smash and rock. And like I said, see how it's, ooh, that one had a baby in it. A little baby garlic. I'll see if I can get that to root. But the smaller cloves work a little better, but we'll be fine. And then I just have to cut up some pepper. We're also going to talk about what kind of tofu I use. And even though I'm, I'm not only making oil-free changes to this recipe, I'm kind of putting my own spin to it as well. And that's what I hope, hope against all hopes, that you do when you make my recipes. Maybe you like a spice that I didn't put in there. So... Um, Priya did not put any ooh, kala namak in this, which I feel is important for scrambled tofu if you can get it and if you like it okay. And it's black salt. That's pink. It's a lot like, um, it's a lot like that deluxe three cup pint. It doesn't always make sense to me. But sometimes life is what it is. Um, I'm going to give it just a minute more and then we'll put the garlic in. I'm also, so I have some frozen peppers that I'm going to chop up and then I have one little wax pepper I got from the garden. Oh, I, you can get this all over the place. I did get mine in, I'm washing my hands again, at the thrift store. But you can get them at Amazon, you can get them at Home Goods, you can get them at Trader, or not Trader Joe's, TJ Maxx. All those places have them, which is just great. And so I just want to saute these onions until they're clear and translucent. And I'm going to go over a little bit lower heat, even though I'm trying to speed this up ever so slightly.
but I want them to get soft and sweet and flavorful. Cheryl hates raw onions. So I just can't have that raw onion taste. Um, it's just not gonna work for me. Oh, Mary Ellen likes um, chickpea salt. It tastes like eggs, exactly. Which is why I love using it, um, particularly in scrambles, with tofu scramble. And if you're allergic to soy, a couple of options you would have is there's chickpea and hemp tofu. Um, I think there's fava bean tofu now as well. Oh, this is heavy. And you could use any of that instead. You could even just use mashed chickpeas. I'd probably use two cans, I think. And I'm just gonna, I'm cutting up this pepper and I'm gonna cut up some strips of the frozen pepper a little bit smaller. Cheryl's probably gonna pick it out. And then I will put it on my plate. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Whispering Jesse. These are my jammies. These are my new pumpkin inspired jammies. And I, I have been out and about, so I taught a class last night at seven o'clock, which is a little late for me. And I taught a class the afternoon before that. I did a live on Friday. So I feel like I've been kind of a busy camper and I'm a little bit tired, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some of this garlic. And I just take a spoon, or you could take a spatula, and just get off. You either want to put this and soak it, and I'll show you why. See, everything's gonna get hardened on in here. So, you know, I have some stuff soaking over there, so I'm just gonna put it in. Leave that little spoon in case it comes into handy later. And I'm gonna go ahead and scrape in my pepper. Now she also uses a tomato. I used my last tomato, fresh tomato last night. So I'm going to put some salsa in here. Now another thing I could have done, <laughs> because we have some Rotel tomatoes, I bought a case of them but Cheryl put them somewhere and I couldn't find them this morning. So I would have put in just some Rotel tomato. That again adds a little green chili. You could add green chilies instead if you wanted to. Oh no, Mona's at the vet with a foster dog. Oh, it's a good thing because she might be able to have her sight restored in one eye. Well, we'll all keep her in our thoughts. Um, and Devika says, what I appreciate so much is how to adapt and make changes, which is wonderful for a person like me that feels you must follow a recipe exactly. Learning to let go of control. And I will tell you, in all things, it is best to be flexible and kind of roll with the punches. It's not easy. So I was a kid that when I opened up the Britannica Children's Encyclopedia and I made my grilled cheese exactly the way they told me, I would put the number of potato chips on the plate that were in the picture. So I wasn't born like, woohoo, let's just make a recipe like this. You have to teach yourself. And you know, it goes against the grain because you wanna do things right. You wanna do things perfectly. And then you get old like me and you realize, wait, nothing's ever perfect. So why am I stressing myself out? I see a little bit of what's going on. Um, I'll see if I missed anything else. Yeah, uh, black salt tastes like egg. And you can use it in chickpea salad, tofu egg salad, whatever you want. There's so many uses for it. It is an Indian ingredient. And oh yeah, I have been very busy. And <laughs> today is busy self-care day in that I may wear my jammies all day and drink tea while I do all the things. 
Um, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Um, and we'll also talk, and I use a garlic press or garlic sharpener, and there's no wrong way to do it. My old neighbor loved Halloween. She decorated the outside of her house. We used to, before the pandemic, we did a multi-course sit-down gothic dinner party. So I would do like five courses and an amuse-bouche, and sometimes there would be multiple desserts. And the upstairs is mostly open, so the living room, dining room, kitchen area. Cheryl would make the kitchen like a forbidden forest with spiders, and she'd cover the walls. Um, this year, I think it's just a wearing pajamas year, although we are going to be going to a ghost tour in Salem. We're not really going to be able to visit much else. We are going to a conference in Massachusetts, so I'm super excited about that. Okay, so while this is kind of doing its little cookie thing, and yeah, you do whatever makes you happy about garlic. You want to mince it up, you mince it up. You want to use a, my, I like the garlic smasher for me, but that doesn't mean whenever I'm showing you something, it never means I think you need this and this is how you should do it unless I explicitly say, I found this cool new thing that you need to see. And then, even then I'm like, but you don't have to use it. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Wearing jammies is a good sign of letting go. That's how I, yeah, I'm definitely in that team. Ooh, the King's Child had a, an all-day PJ day on Saturday. I really wanted it to be that way yesterday, but I had to go to the store to get things for my class. It, it messed it up for me. Yay, Claudia's here. I'm so glad you finally made a live. You may make, I'm doing one for lunch. And I don't have it officially scheduled for dinner, but chances are, uh, I think it's in a couple of weeks. It's in October is when we're going. But email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I'll get you more information. If you're around there, maybe we can hang out or something. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Yeah, these are my new, I feel like these are my new multi-seasonal Halloween because it's not too, you know, they're not flannel, they're not hot. Okay, so we've got some of these veggies going. Let's take a look and see what else she, doo -doo -doo. I've got a can of beans that I've been draining. So, Okay, when she adds the spices later. She also adds something called Mexican seasoning. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not rinsing these beans, they're low salt. Um, you know how I am. I'm gonna put a little bit of salsa in here because I don't have a tomato. You could use canned tomatoes. And I'm looking for my grandma opener. because I have teeny tiny little hands. So I'm probably trying to see if I've got a little, yeah, here we go. Let's see if this will fit in here, yeah. Probably gonna use about a quarter cup. This is a mild salsa. And you can make, let's say you didn't have a salsa, or not this, I would just put in diced tomatoes in here but you can take a can of diced or crushed tomatoes, puree it with garlic, green chilies, or put it in a food processor, pulse it, lime juice and cilantro. There you go, it's beautiful. Okay, so we've got all that in there. Now, I wanna talk just for a minute about tofus. So she's saying pressed extra firm tofu. This is extra firm. This is super firm. See, it says high protein, super firm. And those of you McDougaling or doing some other things might be like, what? Did they add protein to this? No, it's just very firm. And I wanna tell you, I would not press this tofu either. I would just cook it until the liquid comes out. I feel like it's an unnecessary step. But I'm also gonna show you you don't need to press super firm tofu. Okay. 
and everybody has a tofu opener knife, right? That the rest of the world calls a steak knife. We know it's for opening tofu packages only. And hopefully I have, you can tell I'm joking. Okay, there will be a tiny bit of water in here, but I've, I've got this just so you can see just how little water comes out of this, almost none. And I could either, here, let me toss this out and I'll just crumble it and here is what I usually do. And see how nice and dry it already is. It's also actually just more tofu. So if you notice it's more expensive and you're like, I can press my own tofu, thank you very much. I don't need to pay you to do it. Um, it's just more tofu. That's why it costs more money. So both packages are, well, that's 18 ounces. This one was 16 ounces, but that counts the water. And so even though I strained the black beans, I used this can one. So there's some, there's some liquid from it, some liquid from the peppers, some liquid from the tomatoes. Oh, I will, Davika, I will show you that tool as soon as I get my hands out of the tofu and wash them. Oh, you guys are hilarious with your Kathy Hester Day. I got my grandma can opener at the thrift store and you can find a bunch of them because they're a little, they can be a little dangerous. And if you remember them growing up like I do, I used to get blood blisters from them. So you have to be very careful. And there's some, um, some other plastic sorts of things, but I just don't think they work as well. Fair, not fair to say, I don't know. But um, you be the judge. So usually what I would do too, especially in something like this, I would go ahead and put my turmeric and my spices in here, but I'm gonna do it Priya's way. Um, so we're just kind of trying to cook it a little bit dry. And if I use the other tofu, I would still add it and cook it a little more dry. Okay. And this is going to be, I just decided this is tofu we're going to use in scrambles, burritos. Well, we're not really using burritos, but I am going to make her tostadas. So if you're on a no, whole food plant-based no oil diet, these are Trader Joe's almond flour tortillas. They do have um, fat in them because it's almond flour, but they don't have any added oil. So what you can do is take your little thing from your Instant Pot, put it in your air fryer, and it'll hold it down flat to make a tostada. I'm not going to do that right now. And this is that opener. I think it's, yeah, this is the old fashioned Foley one. I don't think you can see that though. But so what happens is if you aren't paying attention, it slips. It will pinch you so hard. It will pinch you. I'll turn it down a little bit. And we don't really need to cook the tofu. We're just warming it up, mixing it with this. She is using, let's see how much we got here. Two teaspoons of cumin. I'm just gonna use the big jar. I am going to go ahead, since we're not using any kind of other seasoning, I wasn't going to, but if I have some coriander over here, have a little bit. I'm probably going to add a little bit of coriander. Coriander and cumin go great together in both Indian and Mexican cuisine. Okay, we've got that. We're going to do about two teaspoons of paprika. That could be smoked if you miss, you know, that smoky flavor with breakfast or just any time. Hey, Liz Lena from West Virginia. And Claudia says, I have 
I saved the fat wide rubber bands from broccoli and used those on jars. That's really smart too. We're adding some turmeric. We're gonna put a teaspoon of turmeric in. That's gonna help this look eggy. So we'll give it a nice color. And then she said two tablespoons of Mexican seasoning. So if you guys probably were not at my fabulous after 40s class that I taught, this is a mixture of dried ancho chili peppers. I don't know what that is. Dried ancho chili peppers and um, guajillo. So I'm just using not chili for, you could use chili for the stew powder. She says two teaspoons of that. So I'm going to add some of that. That will add a really nice dark, multi-layered flavor to everything. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little Mexican oregano. And Mexican oregano, if you don't have it, um, marjoram is closer. So I'm going to do about two teaspoons of that. Because it, it has this heady, flowery, lemony aroma. So it's not... It's not Italian oregano at all. I would not substitute that. And then I'm gonna put in, if, you, if you're not salt free, I would put in some Kalanamak. I said black salt and it's pink. So we'll try, I'm probably gonna put about a teaspoon in. And now I can smell the egginess of my scramble. And then I will look back and see if I left anything out. Here we go. Let me move all this so you don't have to see the trash. And like I said, I have a meeting in just like five minutes, three minutes. <laughs> and you guys are like, but wait, you, you waited so long to tell me about the live. Now you see what time schedule I'm running on today. Um, so she is serving it on crisp tortillas. You could use corn, you, the same thing with the almond flour. If you can't have almond, just use corn tortillas. They don't have oil in them typically. Really, they're not supposed to. And you can crisp that up in your air fryer. I would do 400 degrees with something on it, like the little thing that comes with your Instant Pot. I would put it flat side down on top of that tortilla so it can't escape, but and see, look how good this looks. And last night, I made my salsa verde. You can get the recipe. I think the recipe is on plant-based Instant Pot. It could be on um, healthy slow cooking. And then I'm filming for my class coming up on Saturday, which is a slow cooker class, which is why it's, I'm gonna be hanging out talking live, but it won't be filmed live because nobody's got time like that. Oh, that smells so good. You could also add in shredded carrots. You could add in um, chiffonaded greens, collards, kale, um, greens, or just add it in when you heat it up. And this, my dears, will freeze beautifully, just beautifully. Um, let me take a taste of it so we can kind of see if it needs anything else or if I like the balance of these spices. Mmm. I like it. Uh, for my taste, I might put a little bit more Kalanamak in. If you're watching your salt, I'm putting another half teaspoon. So I put one and a half teaspoons in there. This is what I want. I'm gonna put some lime juice in here. I have a lime left over. So I'm gonna put half a lime, just because I'm feeling that way. Oh, and I'm supposed to put chopped cilantro in here. And Cheryl will be glad that I did. So it also has a quarter cup cilantro. So what I'll do is I'll chop up the cilantro after my meeting, have it in the fridge, so when I heat this up and put everything together, then it'll be all ready to go. That is my alarm for you are supposed to be in a meeting, lady. I know, I wish you had smell vision too. 
Oh yeah. The lime. It needs just a little brightness. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. So because I use those darker home roasted chili powders. That, so basically I took um, dried chilies, took the stems, ribs, and seeds out, and I clipped them into just little small pieces so they dry fast, dehydrated them in the brevel, and put them in the spice grinder. It makes amazing holiday presents, and they're very inexpensive. You can get um, Guajillo chilies at Walmart. So if you have access to a Walmart, but if you, like me, have something like Campari Foods, do try to um, give your money to the local people who are there. Oh, and Terry says it's best to add the egg salt when serving rather than cooking. I usually do it ahead of time. Also, I am going to um, freeze this, and some of it we're going to be taking on the road with us. So I want to have everything in here now, but you should always do what you think is best. And Facebook user is saying, am I saying black salt is low in sodium? No. No. And if you're on a no salt or an extremely restricted salt diet, you may not be able to have it. I'm going to turn this off. However, when I say lower sodium, I'm talking about if I put a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt in there, it's going to taste much saltier to my mouth than this. So what I'm wanting to get is the eggy taste of Kalanamak without over salting it for me. So it could be different for you. If you're on a low salt diet, that would be a thing I wouldn't do. She said um, salt to taste. I chose that salt to be Kalanamak. You could choose it to be no salt. And as always, my plain salt substitute for you guys to use in any recipe that you don't want, Benson's Table Tasty uh, Mexican Blend or Dylan's While Your World Cajun Blend, right? You just want, I don't want all those things in here. Then what you're gonna do is a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon ground celery seed, and Bob's your uncle. Mix it up, use it like salt. So there you go. Let's see if I've got, I'm gonna be late. Um, oh good, yeah, I know. I, the meeting will be fun. I'm meeting with some other cool bloggers, and I, this is what I will be wearing in my Zoom meeting today. I'll see you guys. I think I said one o'clock. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make Dora Stone, who I love. She. I did not know this was a, a Mexican thing. It's um, shell pasta with, in a tomato soup with kind of a chickeny broth. So Cheryl makes something like that with Campbell soup, and she really asked me to make it. So I'll be back making that. And then probably tonight, I haven't scheduled it yet, I will be back making um, making um, air fried cauliflower. So it's gonna be a delicious day. And all of these we can just kind of batch and put away for later. All right, you guys, big hugs, and I will talk to you later today.